Our guest today is Ben Shell, co-founder of Limye Pau, a rural electrification social business startup in Haiti. Ben, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. What does Limye Pau mean? In Haitian Creole, it means your light. Um, so we wanted to give it our, our business a name that people would understand immediately. Um, and light is really probably the most important use of electricity in, uh, in rural areas of Haiti. Can you tell me a little bit about the uh, rural electrification situation in Haiti and how that led to the gen genesis of your project? Sure. So there's, there's three of us co-founders starting the business, uh, myself, uh, another American named Dan Birnbaum, and a Haitian-American named Duquesne Fetnard. So Duquesne grew up in a rural area of Haiti um, and since went to the United States, um, became a U.S. citizen, and um, has worked and gone to school there. But he has, after the earthquake, came back to Haiti and um, really wanted to help um, develop the country and, and heal the country. Um, and he had a vision for uh, energy as a as access to energy is a really important way for that to happen. So um, Haiti has the lowest rate of electricity use per capita in the Western Hemisphere, and it's estimated. Very difficult to get um, good statistics, but estimated that less than 10 percent of people in rural areas in Haiti actually have access to a grid. So there's a huge huge need there. Um, and this is, an, this is a need that Duquesne was, was looking for ways to, to solve. And um, a couple years ago, Dan, uh, who went to grad school with Duquesne, um, started talking to him about some emerging technology uh, that, could, that could contribute to this. And, and I actually knew Dan from, uh, from before, so he brought me in. And, and so we started our business. Great. Uh, what is your business trying to accomplish? So our goal is to electrify rural areas of Haiti using renewable energy. Um, and it's simply that. Um, we think that this can bring a lot of benefits to people, um, starting with light and how that helps you study at night for the kids um, and, and improve education. And also, you can generate income, um, additionally, additional income, because you have good light to work at night, where kerosene lamps right now are are really difficult to read, much less to, to do any other kind of work. Um, so that's, that's where we start. And then we hope that as people can use more electricity and we can generate more and, and provide more per household and per business, that they can actually use uh, new appliances and um, uh, equipment to start new businesses or expand businesses. And sort of looking in the local economy, import less from the outside uh, other parts of Haiti and even internationally and, and, and make more locally and even start to export things um, and so generate more wealth that way. And then finally, I think um, eventually when people can use uh, cooking appliances uh, that use electricity, they can really, and also, and also um, potentially washing machines and things like that, they can save a tremendous amount of time on household chores. And that can, I hope, really affect the free time that women and girls have um, and really help them uh, gain more equal opportunity um, in Haiti. I think that's a really laudable set of objectives. Uh, uh, I know that in other parts of the world, such as Africa, uh, uh, some of the risks of kerosene lamps, etc., uh, have been dealt with by people trying to use solar power uh, to, to address those needs. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain uh, your technology and, and how it differs from, say, using LED lighting and solar energy to solve the same issue? Sure. So we're using gasification technology, which is not a new technology. It's been around for 100 years or so. Um, but there's new versions of small-scale gasifiers coming out, which make it economic for us to deploy it in a, in a rural area. Um, and create a, a business around generating and selling electricity. So what that, what, what, how that works is you take biomass, um, and we're using, um, well, actually I have right here, we're using corn cobs. Um, here's the corn cob from, from rural Haiti. And this is basically treated as trash in Haiti. Um, farmers will take this 
after they take the kernels off, they'll, they'll basically just throw it away or they'll burn it when they run out of charcoal um, for stoves. So using this, um, you put it into our, our system, which creates charcoal out of it, and then eventually through combustion and another process called reduction creates a, a gas, uh, two types of gases, carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas, H2, which are both combustible gases, and you can run through an engine and, and burn, just like you can run propane or another kind of gas through, through engines. So we're really excited about this because um, it's a lot cheaper to deploy than solar. So if you want to have a solar system in uh, a standalone solar system, then you need batteries, you need inverters, you need solar panels. And the batteries especially are very expensive and, and uh, difficult to maintain. So a solar system is going to cost, of, of a similar um, size as our gasifier, would cost two to four times as much. Um, so uh, we're really excited about this new technology, which will allow us to make a business that is sustainable, that can grow. Um, and serve uh, the huge need that exists in Haiti and in other countries too. So how many people would this uh, uh, technology serve initially and how would you plan to scale it? So we have one system now which we're planning to pilot uh, this summer. We're, we're supposed to launch that pilot this summer. And that system can serve anywhere from 100 to 200 households. Um, and it really depends on how much energy each household uses. But we're talking about pretty small amounts of energy um, between you know 60 and 300 watts per household, um, so that system should should serve uh, as our pilot. But then we can add more systems onto that. We can add bigger systems, and our goal really is to make this pilot successful and prove that people will be willing to pay for electricity at a price that allows us to uh, to, uh, to to grow basically to make profit and to pay back our investment costs and to grow and to attract investors who are not probably uh, hedge funds or anybody looking for 20 or 30 percent returns, but, but social investors who are, have patient capital, um, who want to make money, but who really care about uh, how they do that and really interested in, in helping the millions of people um, in rural Haiti and the billions of people throughout the world that don't have access to electricity now. So speaking of investors, what is your source of funding at the moment and how sustainable is it? So right now, we're funding ourselves um, through the co-founders. Um, we're putting in our own time and effort and money. And we're also, we've also won some, some business plan competitions, which have given us some grant money that's designed to basically get us to the point where we can launch the pilot. Um, and so we're, we're going to launch the pilot and hopefully make that work. And then once we have a model that works, we can take that to investors and, uh, and see if they can help us grow. But Haiti is one of the poorest countries in the world. How does that affect your aspirations? Well, I mean, I think Haiti is a really difficult place um, to do business, but um, I think we have a great team, especially um, with Duquesne and his, and his knowledge and connections in the country. Um, so I think we're well positioned, as well positioned as anybody in that country to get things done. Um, and I think we see so much need in Haiti um, that that's really where we want to be in places in Haiti or places like Haiti, um, because that's where there's need and difficulty, which also correspond to opportunity. So we see it as a lot of opportunity. Uh, how important is it to have a local partner? Um, well, I mean, Duquesne is is uh, he's a Haitian American, so I mean, he's not. He's not 100% local. He's not 100% foreign. He's, he's a mix between the two. But, but he's the reason why I'm involved um, in this business is because I met him really inspired by um, his vision and, and the work that he had already done in Haiti. And I thought he'd be a great partner. And so far, we've, we've done a lot together. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what have been your toughest challenges so far? And what have you done to address those challenges? Sure. So. Um, there's been a number of challenges. Um, I think getting things done in, in rural Haiti has been just slower than I would have expected. I've, I've worked in developing countries basically my whole career, um, but it's, it's a little bit, it, it, it's slower than, than it has been in other countries and more difficult in some senses. But um, that's also, on the flip side, has been really surprising in terms of 
how open and excited and supportive the government has been um, for us. Um, so they are really encouraging us and, and supporting us to launch this pilot. Um, the, frame, the legal framework around it is, is quite flexible, so they are interpreting it in a way which, um, which is really encouraging us. So I think that's been, that's been surprising and, and been great. Um, the technology itself, um, we're sourcing from, uh, from the United States, and it's actually taken longer than we thought to adapt that technology to the, the reality that we see in rural Haiti. So that's also been, um, been a challenge. So, so where would you say you need help the most? Um, I think uh, I think what we're really gonna need, where we're really gonna need help is in the future, once we've gotten our pilot up and running, um, getting the funding um, and finding the right partners that can provide funding for us to grow. I think um, we're very business minded, but we also have a very strong commitment to making sure that electrification uh, really helps people and creates new opportunities for people. And it's not just about electricity, um, but it's also about creating new opportunities and, and economic growth and, and social change in rural Haiti. So I think finding the right partner that also has that vision is probably the most important thing for us. What's been your most inspirational moment so far? Um, I think working with farmers in in uh, rural areas, especially in the, in the village where we're planning to to do the pilot, working the, with the farmers in that community has been incredibly inspirational because they are really, really they really really want um, electricity to come, and they've been really supportive, and they are really an inspiration in terms of how hard they work and and the vision they have just for their own community. So we're just trying to. Uh, form a strong partnership with them, and uh, and together I think we can uh, we can do we can do a lot of great things. Uh, and one final question: Where do you, what do you see happening in the next six months? So, um, launching the pilot is the biggest uh, the biggest thing in the next six months. So, um, after six months, we should have launched that pilot and um, be working out the kinks in terms of the operational model and starting to hopefully raise uh, money to expand. Ben, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, and all the best to you and Lemieux Pao. Thank you very much, McCool. I appreciate the time.